Hi guys, anyone there? This is what we do That's every week. weird. So, I'm right, still Ron, I'm still not alone. used to the very beginning. Hello. Bit kiss me from anyone starts. Oh, okay. No, it won't get you injected. <laughs> so I did. Um, Jeremy, you got to go to Facebook. Not your pages, but you go to Facebook. Yeah, but my phone wasn't working last time, honey. Someone's here. Someone's just logged in. Two's logged in. Three. Hey, people. How you doing? We are not in a tiny house, which apparently is my fault. What? Because you... Oh, tonight. Let's see Hi, that. Christine. Here we go. Hi, We're all Mickey. sorted. We've got our message. We can see it. Well, you here. have. I, I never... You, you oh, don't. for Christ's sake. It's not difficult, honey. Uh, you talk to the people. You talk to the people. Why are you calling them the people? <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> just getting sorted here. You just search for Tiny Houses Australia. Mm -hmm. You don't go to the pages manager. Imagine you don't have the pages manager. You go to the page and, oh look, they're live. And then you just click on it and then... Okay. There we go. You see it's not working. Yeah, it is working. Uh, now you take your phone. Oh, you okay. Anyway, so we did advertise people that we were going to be, everyone's probably going to, they're not in a bloody tiny house. Lying, is that your friend Otavio? Lying bastards. Huh? Hi, Otavio's here. <laughs> How are you, mate? Hi, Otavio. I finished work at like four o'clock. We didn't get time to do nothing. We were supposed to go out to Mount Bullock. Um, so yeah, some of you are probably thinking, you lying bastards, you said you were going to be doing this yeah, live from few, a tiny house. There's a few joining us. There's about 15 people there. So welcome along, people. Is that too much of above your head? Or is the framing all right? Or do you want me to tilt it down? No, that's fine. Okay, cool. I would have liked it to be up higher. Well, well, you know, what can you do? Hey, Tavia. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so we were supposed to be, right now, 8 p.m. on Friday, we were supposed to be doing this live from the tiny house that is living in Cloud 9, up in Mount Buller, wasn't it? Yeah, but you were late home. From work. Blame Felix. <laughs> Otavio Felix is his fault. Right. So, um, yeah, so I didn't get home until... Hi, Helen. And so I'm driving home saying, no, have you packed your bags? I'll just jump in the shower and then we can go. And Lisa's going, I'm not going. We'll go tomorrow. Mm. Hello, Kat. <laughs> hey, Kat. Morning. Morning. <laughs> Where's, where's Morning, I don't know where he's he is. Probably been sleeping all day. So, <laughs> oh, he's a, been doing night shifts. So. Yeah. so, yeah, I spoke to Carl this afternoon uh, from Living in Cloud Nine. The house is almost finished, but we're still going to go up there tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to go tomorrow. I didn't, by the time Darren got home, it was four o'clock. No, actually, it wasn't. It was 5.30. It was like 5.40 or something. Yeah, 5.30 and it was already dark. Yeah. And you'd been up since... 4.30? 4.30 in the morning. 4.30 yeah. this morning and I think it's about a three hour trip, isn't it? About two and a half and she just yeah. doesn't trust me driving. I thought, no, by the time we get there it's going to be dark, cold and... But the fire yeah. apparently works now. He has got running water up and last time we, we had the electricity connected last time we were up there. Um, but um, We're going to go there tomorrow, Helen, so... Yeah, we're going. Oh, we're going. Cause yeah, we're still going to be there. But we are going to do a live feed from there tomorrow anyway. Yeah. yeah, because we've been promising a bit of a reveal. Um, because when we went up a couple of weeks ago, it was a Hi, bit of a, John. It was a bit of a construction site. You see us looking down. We're looking John. at our phones. It's just easier to read from our screen. Yeah, it looks a bit more professional rather than us squinting and going, "Who's that?" I was, oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, there was a bit of a construction site when we went up probably about what three weeks ago. Yeah, three about three weeks. Um, and it was great, but there was a bit of sawdust and power tools everywhere, you know. And so he has been up there with his wife doing the finishing touches. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, being winter, we were saying, you know, he's trying to do a final. That's what I reckon, car. Better mm -hmm. safe than splattered all over the road. <laughs> well, that's true. Oh, yeah. We've had a couple of Red Bulls. That's fine. Yeah. No, he, he does get tired driving, so. You, you get tired and cranky, don't you? Anyway, we're going to go there. Um, yeah, so Carl, I would have liked to have gone tonight. No filter. Because Carl has beer and pies in the fridge for us, apparently. So, 
Hey, yeah. Lisa. <laughs> so, hey, Lisa. So, yeah, uh, so what's been going on? What well, else, me? Like, what's the week that has happened? Oh, uh, so you asked me what Any we've news? been doing? Or? Yeah. We went out to see the land, the land, Again. a couple of days ago. Um, we spoke to the landowner. We keep on saying the landowner. Now, we don't know. We, we've got to ask him whether he's interested in being known as the guy or whether he we wants to be this faceless, yeah. anonymous. We don't know how investor. involved he wants to be in the whole project and whether he wants to be interviewed at all or if he just wants to remain silent. Mm. So at this stage, he's just the landowner. Yeah. Shout out to Lisa and Claire and Helen. Hey, hey guys, ladies. Um, yeah, so we went out and met him. Uh, I, I called him the other day and he said, because um, we were talking about going out to the property and spending a good solid hour or two, you know, walking around or driving around the property and sussing out the different fields and sort of breaking it up and sectioning it up. Uh, and I rang him and he said, well, I'm actually going to be out there this afternoon. So, um, do you want to come out? And I said, okay, but... Hello, Leone. Hey, Leone. Don't mind if we just jump in as names pop up. Yeah. So we just want to be able to say hello to you guys. No, to acknowledge them. Yeah. Um, and so he said, yeah, well, I'm going to be out there at 4.30 with the boys. So he's got a couple of kids, uh, four kids, I think, but he had two of his boys out there. Yeah. So, but by the time he rolled up and we actually met him, it was like 4.30. Every time we go out there, the freaking sun's going down. Yeah. But that's okay. We we had another look, another little sticky bank. But we did discover that when the sun does go down, there are mobs of kangaroos. Oh, yeah. It's kangaroos. Bounding Pretty. across the, uh, the land. So, so we'll have to set up one of the tiny houses as well. <laughs> See you, Tavio. Thanks for joining in. Then I may take another call. Oh, okay. All right. See you, mate. We'll see you at work. Hi, Hello. Lindy. Hi, Katrina. Hey, Lindy. So, um, yeah, so maybe we'll have to set up one of the tiny houses as a bit of a Japanese farm. We, we did actually bring up the um, conversation about pets with the owner again, and we discussed it. And he he's pretty flexible in terms of what we what sort of rules are set in place. He just doesn't want to have issues with it uh, harassing the wildlife. Just had an idea. A pet kangaroo. That is the wildlife. Mm -hmm. It's just an idea. <laughs> I'll shut up. Because I never know where you're going to go. Where is he going? Where are you taking it? <laughs> have, a pet, have a pet, which is wildlife. That's the problem. Anyway. No. Uh, so, it's not an, <laughs> like what you say with the... Um, the insurance, it's not a blanket yes and it's not a blanket no. No. With pets, so. So the owner has said that he's happy to leave it up to us. Um, hey, Mary. To, for, to, for us to make it our discretion. And so, Janie. Hello. My, <laughs> so my approach is if you have a dog, well, a dog could be a little chihuahua that does not leave your lap and doesn't say boo to anything, or it could be a... 150 kilogram Rottweiler that lives outside chained up to a tree and has got a big kennel and goes berserk every time someone looks at him. Thank you. So, um, oh, he's just protected. No, we're not, you know, that sort of thing. No, so it depends. That's the dogs are what I'm concerned about. If you've got a pet guinea pig or a pet rabbit or whatever, um, obviously they'll be in a, a hut, a, some sort of hutch or contained in a pen. Um, if you want to have a cat, then it would, it needs to be. We don't want it to be one of these cats that Basically. lives outside and it just comes back to the house to be That's to be fed. <clears throat> They're just got to be contained. If you've got a dog, it's got to be on a leash if you're outside. Now, this is just for the moment because we don't know how it's going to go. Once people are living there, we might get a feel of how everyone works together and how all the animals yeah. interact with each other and, and it might be fine. Maybe you can take it off the leash and play yeah. fetch. So at the yeah. moment, it's we want it to be. It depends on the breed as smooth the, sailing yeah. as possible to begin with. You guys know what yeah. I mean. It depends on the breed of the dog, and it depends on the individual animal as well. Just because something's a Rottweiler, it could be. Oh, but he's a darling. He doesn't. He'd never hurt a flea. But I've met some little chihuahuas that are little shits as well. So hi, Francesca. Um, yeah. Yeah. Say hello to people. I, I, I am. Hello, people. people. <laughs> um, in case anyone's wondering, we're not in the tiny house that is living in cloud nine. Aren't but we? we are going. We're going to be there tomorrow night, so we will do a 30-minute live. Same time, do you think? Yeah, because that, this is on the Wi-Fi, so that's okay. 
But tomorrow is going to be on my mobile data, so we're not going to blow too much of that. But we'll do, we can do half an hour, maybe 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, we will give more of a proper tour tomorrow. We're going to do a proper recorded... Oh, Lisa's going to do... Oh, the, that's true. Leone said responsible pet owners do look after their pets. And that's what we want. We, yeah. we, you know, that's it. Yeah. And that will all come down to the interview and that. We're, we're going to... Like, the, we had the initial call out. We've had quite a... We've had, over large 50, response, we've had so. over 57 emails of people that are interested, but that's also a mixture of people that are seriously interested and mm -hmm. people that go, oh yeah, that's, that sounds good, send me some information. It's like, well, are you interested? Do you live on the other side of the country and you're just curious as to what we're doing? So there's tie kickers in there, but um, which makes me... And <laughs> kids tied up in the paddock. Yeah. <laughs> which, <laughs> you were round all the kids up, put them in one field. Uh, um... I'm thinking she's talking about, like, I don't know. <laughs> but it does make me want to remind people that if you do want to inquire about <laughs> this land, then the process is we're going to be the managers, we're going to be the point of contact, so you have to go through us. Yeah. If we don't like you, you're not in. But anyway, no, you know what I mean. But <laughs> you need to email us and email us, like, who you are, your full contact details, give us your email, give us your mobile number so we can ring you if we need to. Let us know why you want to be considered for a spot in this community, you know, what you can bring to the community, yeah. what sort of life you envisage leading in this community. Yeah, it's just the initial contact and then um, we'll have a period where we're going to meet you all and have a sit down, probably at a cafe or something. And if you've got a dog, we want to meet your dog and all that sort of stuff. You know, well, we don't we need to meet the dog, we yeah, just no, we ask meet. about the dog. No, we need to meet the dog. <laughs> um, um, so that's how we're going to handle it. Um, yeah, case by case situation. We did have an interesting request, which we're talking more with the owner about. And uh, he, yeah, he the TP, yeah, yeah. No, not the TP. One guy asked no, if he could. No, and you're doing it again. I know, but I'm going to tell him so, about the TP. No. So, uh, what was I saying? You had an interesting request. Every time we, busted. hang on, every, every time we have Friday night live drinks, I said, and make sure if I've got something to say, let me say it. Let I me do. think. No, <laughs> it's the same every week. One guy was happy with one hundred and fifty dollars no, a week, no, but he said, "Can I live in my teepee?" No, that's not what I was I saying. I think that's cool, but we've got to draw a line but somewhere. That's not what I was saying. As cool as teepees are, what you were saying is we had an interesting request from Damn. a guy who wanted to set up a bit of a, a land holding. And you promised. And I'm delivering on that promise. And he's not delivering on a promise. <laughs> Hi, Colin. Hey, Colin. So yeah, we had an interesting request from a guy. Uh, he said he met us at uh, the recent Melbourne Home Show, and he was wondering if he can have. I don't know what a holding is. I have to look up what a holding is. But he did. He wants to fence off a certain area and have livestock. And I thought, well, that would be interesting, you know. Um, so well, we we brought it up to the landowner, and he's open. We're, so yeah. we're in the middle of discussing things like now, that. It would probably cost more than. Yeah. One hundred and fifty dollars for him if that's what he wants. Yeah. It would probably be in a separate area to like if yeah. people do want to come on board and have a little bit of a hobby farm like that. Yeah. It might be that they are in one area, whereas yeah. the rest are in another area. Yeah. So, so we need to look at separating, setting up one field, and we need to find out how much the land this guy wants. I mean, because if he wants, if he just wants a pig and, and a cow. And he wants to plant some yeah. trees. That's fine. But if he wants yeah. to set up a hundred square metre or a, or a five hundred square metre, you know, crop yeah. uh, of something and, yeah. and set up his own little market garden, whatever, then no, it's a different situation. And that's not one hundred and fifty. Okay, a holding is an animal farm. Okay. Yeah. So. Hi, mum. Oh, hey, mum. Tommy, how do I message you? Is that week? is that Tommy who messaged us? Yeah, it is. Us? Tommy, sorry, man. I've just been working like fourteen hour days each day, so. I'll, I'll, as soon as we get off tonight, I will message you uh, my number and we'll give you a call tomorrow. Give us a couple of hours because we're going to drive to Mount Buller. But once we're sitting by the fire, yeah, Mount Jamie, Buller, uh, the owner's happy to have some chooks on the land. So yeah, I, I want some chickens on the land. And... We're supposed to be vegan. We are. We, we can sell eggs. Chickens. Are you still a, are you still a vegan if you raise chickens? To have the eggs and then sell it if you don't consume the eggs. Is that still a vegan? Or is that like a commercial vegan? <laughs> <coughs> anyway, so yeah, a couple of chickens is fine. Not if you want to have 200, but if you want to have like half a dozen chickens, that's fine. They just need to be in some sort of caged 
it's funny because I was on I was online. <coughs> your cock's back. I was online as you do, and. Did you say your mum's there? Yeah, mum's there. Oh, hey mum. Yeah, so oh God, are you vegan? We, um, we've been vegan for about a year. Um, we're trying to go vegan. Health reasons, because of my arthritis. So I thought, well, let's try vegan, veganism. I want to see. Vegan diet to see how we go that way. I want to see what it does for her arthritis. And if you ever so watch Earthlings, you might consider it yourself. As well, <laughs> it's like a horror movie. Yeah. Earthlings, um, what the health, um, food matters, food ink, yeah, all, all these sort of documentaries. <coughs> but I'm looking at it from the point of view of a health as a former personal trainer. You wouldn't know it. I lost my abs. I'll get my abs back. Um, I'm looking at it from a health point of view, and in terms of what a more food based diet can. Tommy's do. vegan. He said, "Well done, guys. Us vegans need to stick together." <laughs> So I'm looking at it from a health point of view. I want to see what it does for Lisa's arthritis can, yeah. um, symptoms um, and also my body shape because I want to get my abs back and you want to get some abs as well. Right? <laughs> I love vegans. They taste nutty. Yeah. My sister's been vegan for a couple of years three now. Years. Two, three, yeah. what? About three years. About three years. Um, meat was easy to give up. Meat is fine. Yeah, yeah meat was easy. Eggs, I don't even know. That's fine. Uh, eggs, meat, no problem. I drink oat milk with my coffee. Yeah, so milk was the hard one for me. Cheese even. I, I thought cheese was going to be hard. Cheese, cheese. Cheese was hard for me. I still get cravings for she cheese. She still likes a blue vein every now and then. Um, yeah, I know. I, 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 we're weaning off. So we want to say we've been vegans for a year. Meat, no worries. Um, well, if, if we go out for dinner and there's, there's bugger all vegan mm. options available, which is often the case, and there's not much in the way of vegetarian. Yeah. See if there's a vegetarian dish. If not, then I might go seafood. Yeah. Exactly. Even, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, milk's been the hard thing for me. We tried soy milk. For me, you know, soy milk tastes like off cardboard. Look, you said know. that about almond milk as well. Yeah. Almond milk just tastes a bit plain. Um, coconut is coconut milk was wonderful. So was rice milk. Coconut milk was amazing. It made me feel like I was in the islands, you know, on the holiday. But then after a while, you get a bit of sick, uh, sick of the Caribbean sort of flavour. Yeah. It was a bit too strong. Yeah. Um, rice milk was a bit watery and plain. And oat milk was nice, but it's just not the same as. I like it. I don't know. In fact, if I've run out and you've got milk and I have a little bit of your milk, it's like no. Nah, it, I actually it feels like I'm. It's, can taste chemicals or something. Well, it is, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but prior to us turning be turning vegan, um, I did want a cow and I did want chickens and I did want a goat. And, you know, I want to grow my own food and at the time milk my own cow. <laughs> so. See, Vicky could go without meat, but not cheese and eggs. So that's fine. So Vicky, come and live with us. We'll we'll bring some eggs and we'll sell you some eggs. They'll be healthy, <laughs> organic eggs. I mean. So, yeah, but, um, but yeah, there won't be a problem with if people want a few chooks. And, yeah. Um, I'm still learning different recipes and stuff. I mean, basically anything just without meat or just without, like I use coconut milk in place of, or, or cream. Or, yeah. There's a few yeah. vegan YouTube birds that we uh, follow, that Lisa follows as well. But anyway, um, that's that's a whole different topic. And another blatant plug for them because they are good people and we do want to get them on an interview at some point. Hannah and Derek. Hannah runs High Carb Hannah uh, Vegan Lifestyle YouTube channel yeah. with hundreds of thousands of followers. And Derek, the husband, runs Life Inside a Box where he documented the build of his tiny house. He's not a builder. He's an electrician. But he built his tiny house. And it's a bloody nice one too. So, yeah. That's just a diet through. That's just... um. What Vicky's we're... taking the piss out of my accent. She's having chickens. <laughs> yeah. Yes, these fellas can have some chicks. Um, oh, big news yeah, from yeah, big news. from from Carl at living in Cloud Nine. What's big news. Well, you know the video that I did sitting on top of the kitchen cupboards at Carl's place, where Lisa said, well, "Where no, are you?" No. Hang on, and I said, You're "Well, this revealing is revealing stuff before we're going to reveal it." But he's made an addition 
Yeah. Based on he we'll, was inspired we'll, by we'll one of my ideas. Just reset. Oh. This is another thing we said we weren't going to do. What? Wait till we're there. When we're there. You don't let me let cats out of the no, bag. No, because you don't let me let cats out of the bag. <laughs> There's another cat that I want to let out, let out, let out, let out, let out of the bag. But I was just thinking about it. But um, Lisa said, no, I'm not, to have got, not to have got something in writing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see if you... You may as well. Why not? So, you guys know we manufacture, not me, we don't, we don't know how to make a trailer, but we sell Tiny Houses Australia custom built high quality trailers. I think we covered this last week anyway. Uh, we are very, But we are closer on signing. Yeah, so paper. we have a company that we're going to be probably working with um, in Brisbane to do our Tiny Houses Australia trailers. So, um, and delivery is going to be available. Uh, so there's going to be... Trailers coming out of so Tiny Houses Australia trailers available out of Melbourne and out of Brisbane. Um, next up is going to be New South Wales, and then South Australia, then Western Australia. So, so now, Mum's saying a lovely vegetarian lady said to me that she wouldn't eat anything that had a face, so her friends put smiley faces on her eggs. <laughs> Bella wants to know did anyone go to the Ala Dala thing. Uh, we didn't, but um, apparently it was quite a good turnout. Um, yeah, we haven't spoken to him, to Grant yet. Um, yeah. I mean, I have briefly, but not about that. But just based on his yeah. photos, there was a good yeah. turnout. So One of our Facebook followers, uh, probably more, hopefully more, but one, certainly one of our Facebook followers went along. Thanks, Kat. Took some photos and sent us some photos via, she said, I wasn't sure how to get this public. She sent us a private message through the page, so we'll get in touch with Hi, them. Gareth. <laughs> hey, Gareth. How you doing? What's up, homies? <laughs> um, what would... You have like, like, basically what mum... <laughs> oh, see, that's what he said. Oh, is this... Yeah. <clears throat> You're embarrassing sometimes, uh, Gaza. <laughs> indeed. Luckily, luckily so, I've got my wine sitting here on my slinky like sofa table. The don't you? Well, Slinky Sofa Table. From SlinkySofaTables.com. You're going to get sick of you talking about the Slinky. I know. Should I tell them about the other cat in the bag? We've got another yeah, giveaway. Oh, I okay. had something to say, but it's gone again. Yeah. So, we were approached by a company in, I think they're in Canada. Don't quite remember. About? We were approached by a company in Canada. These things. Oh. I think, they're in, I think they're in Canada. Don't quote me on it. DiscoveryTrekking.com, big plug for them. We are going to do a proper record, pre-recorded review, a road test. She's moved it. But anyway, it's one of these I things. I don't know if you guys can see that. That is a bath towel. It's a super space-saving, lightweight space. It's, this thing has silver in it. It is an extreme ultralight towel from DiscoveryTrekking.com. They sent us a couple. We're going to keep a couple, but we've got one to give away. It's a beautiful royal blue, so we're going to be giving this one away to one of our lucky people. But what it is... Giant bags of fudge. I, I tried this in the shower. Not really kidding. <laughs> Not in the shower. I tried it after I got out of the shower. You know what I mean. Anyway, it's how big is it? It's 34 inches by 58 inches, and it weighs only 183 grams. He loves it. He's already used it. And... I just, I, I it's don't know. enormous. I, I just don't know how I feel about it. I guess I'll have to try it and find out. It's very thin. You wait till you have a shower and you start rubbing your naked body with this. Oh, please. You will smile. So you, it's see-through. It's, it's kind of see-through, isn't it? Yeah. So now that Carl, living in Cloud Nine, has running water. So Darren's taking the towel and he's going to so make two good of use of it. Yep. So we're going to do a review. We might take a fluffy towel as well. I want to do a side by side comparison. I don't know why you took that out of its cover. Because this is your one. But I wanted to show. It was like an like an unboxing. It's like an unbagging. But that would have been for the YouTube channel. Well, I can fold it up. And what about this thing down here? Anyway, hang on. So, extreme ultralight towel. They do it to come in a large and. It's just shammy. <laughs> they come in a large, a medium, and a mini. This is a large, and those ones are larges as well. Rosie, pick me, pick me. We so, haven't decided how we're going to do the giveaway. We're not so. sure what the conditions are going to be. It's not going to be a put the thing and we'll choose the best one because I don't like having we, to choose. We did that for the first one. 
But yeah, we haven't discussed how we, we're going to we do the giveaway. We did that for the slinky. So no, this one's going to be a lucky dip. We'll get the cat to reach in and pick a name from a hat. Um, but yeah, so one of you lucky people is going to win a extreme ultralight towel from Discovery. Well, we kind of did that. We picked... Oh, what did we do that with? No. That was with the uh, free ticket, the 12 free tickets to the home show. Oh, that's right. I knew we and did that. In Sydney, maybe. Yeah. No, no. That was Melbourne. Yeah, because Sydney is free. Yeah. That's, I don't know why they do that. The home show, the Sydney home show, it's free entry. And um, Melbourne, it's Melbourne going to pay. Like 20 bucks in. It's Melbourne. That's Victoria for you. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. What else is news? Um, what else is news? So you just said the trailer, so there's going to be trailers coming coming out of Brisbane. And that was all pretty straightforward actually. I, I emailed about 10 companies that this is what we want to do. We want to have one company that we do business with. Um, we've got a lot of inquiries. This is the following that we have. And surprisingly, again, the marketer in me just doesn't understand how people Not do Not really, business. it's just a car school wine. <laughs> we drank our good wine. Good wine? Yeah, no, it's cheap wine. <laughs> it's nice. It's wine. It's wine. I'll it is officially it. <laughs> wine. Uh, one day. Or upgrade to good wine. Um. <laughs> Cut. He always cracks me up with his comments. So he wants you to use the changing window of the channel when you do the, oh, the switch glass. Yeah. Switch so unfortunately, Carl's probably not going to be there when we get up there and do this uh, walkthrough tour. Um, but it's he's given it a clean. It's not an ultra clean. It's not sort of ready for for guests. But it's. Um, Giving too much away. That was the right. She, I look, but, but beneath the camera, she, she's, she's, she's going. Don't say that. Um, well, you can tell we're a couple married. We're not married. No, you haven't. We're like an old married. Couple. She we're said to me married. two days ago. She said, "I'm not marrying you, Mum, Mum." She said, "She's not marrying you." You, well, you haven't asked, so. When you get shitty, so I'm not marrying you. You can go get stuff. I'm not marrying you. <laughs> This is why I think, like, front out why I'm going to just... You've got, no, you got no filter, there's no sieves. I have plenty of filters. <laughs> um, and personality. Yeah. <laughs> Gregory, all wine is good and healthy. That's, That's true. true. We do have a box of it's wine. A fruit salad we, we have a box of wine waiting for, for us as payment for doing the talk we did at Rewind. So yeah. Darren's going to go pick that up yeah, I'm not next sure how, time he's in the city. I'm not sure how a couple of cases turned into your case of wine is available, hey, but anyway. Be grateful. Yeah. You, you get what you're given. I'd like to be... Isn't that right, Mum? I'd, like <laughs> I'd like to get what I was offered, actually. But anyway, that's, that's fine. Um, yeah. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. So, yeah, we, so we will be up. I got it. There's a couple of calls I'm going to make. I just remembered. I had um, at the last meetup a couple of people wanting to get in touch, and I've got a you got a room for yeah, yeah. Paula. Um, but I was going to say the other news if you haven't already uh, seen it. Well, uh, you're pregnant, honey. I'm joking. Yeah, honey. Yeah. Um, it's gone again. <laughs> that was my fault. It's what was the other news? The news if you haven't seen it. What's what were people have possibly the meetup in um is it Brisbane or the Gold Coast? Yeah, so. It's in the uh, Brisbane. It's in the it's in the Brisbane. Yeah, it's a good compromise. So the cart is running a meet up in the Brisbane uh, on the first Sunday morning of July, and then uh, I've given him the task. Clearly, he hasn't done it yet. Um, of working out a venue for the August meet up, which I'll leave it. <laughs> Gareth's got us on his TV. Uh, We're still trying to figure out stuff too, Gareth. Um, we did. Um, Gareth, I don't know if you heard in one of our past live feeds, we are going to be doing interviews. Darren was playing around with it through the week, but he's still trying to figure out this third party I'm software. I'm not stupid. Carl suggested <laughs> this mini cam thing and it just didn't work for me. So we're using this OSB, open source broadcasting, OBS, it sounds like something from Star Wars. Um, OBS, open broadcaster, open source broadcaster software. See, Kat says I'm a smart girl. Um, which means we can... Dan do... reckons he wants <coughs> me to sign a prenup. <laughs> For what, Dan? <laughs> to protect my assets coming into the relationship. 
What fucking asset? You got nothing. She said, yeah, nice, okay. <laughs> um, anyway. Anyway. I'm keeping my name. Modern girl here. What's wrong with Lisa Hughes? Yeah, I've got to do red tape. Yeah, I've got to do red tape before. I'm 40. How old am I? I'm 42 and I've had my name for all those years. You know, like a year above 41. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, my dear. Um, anyway, so what were you saying? Um, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. So we know you can do bloody Facebook interviews live on air with two cameras from different locations. So we know you can bloody do it. I just need to work out how to do it. Um, but otherwise, we'll just we might just say bugger it. We'll pre-record interviews, and then just upload those to YouTube. Cool. Yes, that's right. Because mine's are getting built first, so. So I'll just. That, we, that's my safety net, right? If we there. ever split up, I'll just take. I'll just go off into the sunset with the display house. <laughs> you have your house. I'll have the display house. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No. Definitely. It's definitely my baby. I mean, it's Al while you're there. <laughs> nice. But if you ever disappear, it's mine. Yeah, that'd be right. Um, which also reminds me, actually, regarding this land and people that are that have been emailing us asking about the land and they're interested in the village. Stop squeezing the knee. No, 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 that was accident. You said no, I don't know where you go. No, that's the wrong What thing. I'm getting at oh, is... Oh, you know what I was thinking about? <laughs> You know the first initial announcement that we made, the first call out that he did in the tiny house, not the video of the land, but the actual him with him talking. There's a video that I've got to put out of you doing all your bloopers. I wasn't. It's not like oh, I know. Let's do some bloopers, honey. That no, I know, but I, I, I put them bloopers. all together. It's just that you said my, and I, I was thinking about the rap that he did. I didn't do a rap. Yeah, he did a rap. He sings in it. He's there singing. Uh, no, no, that's never going to sing the line no, of day. No, he, he sings. The Ghostbusters theme song. No, anyway. <coughs> the point is, people have been emailing us asking about the land, <laughs> right? Thanks. <laughs> we have our moments, oh, it's Gregory. Gregory. Sorry, I've got no glasses on. Not that I wear glasses. I should wear glasses. Yeah, just get some sexy ones if you need glasses. What I was saying was, the people that are inquiring about the land, we've had emails like, oh, that's great, I'd love to build on the land. Maybe I can come and, and live in my, my van while I build or live in my vintage caravan while I build. Or, and we're not going to allow that only because we need, we want to keep it themed to Tiny House. Well, the owner, and we agree, the owner uh, wants to keep the, the community themed to Tiny Houses. Consistent. On trailers. Now we know that tiny houses could involve yurts, house trucks, converted buses, teepees. You know, they're all very, very cool. It's a but he themed tiny house. It's his land. It's his decision. He wants to keep the theme to tiny houses on wheels. So, if if anyone hi is Samantha, so hey Samantha, we, if we need door handles, cover door handles. Oh yeah. She's got Samantha, do you still have all your door handles? Oh, thousands of them. She's like. Oh. Covered door hoarder. Anyway, <laughs> door handle. I was watching a hoarder show the other day. No, don't I branch off. Don't branch off. Oh, don't do what you do. Yeah. Don't do what Darren does. So the point is, <laughs> people need to understand because there's two options for this land we've got. Bring your completed tiny house and live on the land, $150 a week. And people have been asking, what does that get us? Well, what that what that gets you is plenty of uh, space, privacy. Peace and quiet, nature, kangaroos. Um, and also to be a and, part of the first tiny house village. And it's but there's, there's also, going to be some tourism aspects to this village. Obviously, just, you're going to have some privacy and everything. That's yeah. going to be different to separate. Yeah. But so there's going to be you're some all the space and peace and aspects quiet, of it. But you're also going to have the security of knowing that there are other people on the property should and if and when you ever should need them, there's going to be people there. You're going to have contact numbers for us. So we're only a phone call away. And anyone else that you choose, that you meet on the property that you share, choose to share um, details with, we're thinking of setting up a, a secret um, closed Facebook group only for the people that live on the land. So again, we can message each other. It's not really secret. It's just well, what a, the people a closed to Facebook group. It's only for the pe for the people that live on the property. I don't you, know why you even mentioned. Have you got this sugar? I'm out of sugar. Can I borrow some sugar? Yeah, come get some sugar. You know, that kind of thing. It's useful. Technology. Um, you know, 
So, did I leave my phone at your place? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. That's another thing. So, it'll be a Facebook group. But, yeah, so you get all the space and peace and quiet and privacy, but the security of knowing that you've got that contact if and when you need it. But what we envisage is this is not going to be some hippie commune where you're expected to help out washing the dishes. It's, it's and independent all that. living um, as well. You can participate as much as you want or as little as you want. There's going to be, like we've mentioned last time and the time before, that there's going to be a garden. So we're going to look at permaculture and we're going to look at um, permaculture courses and that kind of thing. Yeah. So but what we're saying is if you want to bring in tiny houses, just park it way out the back corner and just don't, you just want to have some alone time. You don't want, you just want to come and go. <laughs> tiny town. You just want to come and go to work and just, obviously not be rude, you'll, you'll say hello and do past people, but you, you just want to live your own life. That's fine. The, the, the actual land itself already has a name, so whether he's going to be keeping that name or if he's going to change it, we're not sure. We are going to be naming roads, though. Oh, that's where I was going. Because there are, the property's that big. It has roads that crisscross the property, so we're going to be naming roads. Yeah, because if you've got visitors coming, you can say, you know, tell them what street or road to turn down. And we could have cart lane. Cart lane, a <laughs> coffee cart. Yeah. I think we're going to have a, we're going to have a tiny house... Um, coffee shop and we, I think we should call it coffee car. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea is we, we're looking at having coffee um, cart shop for it's a pet name pet name for Carteret. Yeah. yeah. So yes, just to finish off what I was saying, there's two options. Bring your completed tiny house <laughs> on a trailer. They don't all have to look like a tumbleweed whatever, right? But they have to be completed tiny houses on a trailer. So no in, engines, no motors, Hang internet on. coverage, huh? Yeah, hang on. So either bring your completed tiny house. It could be a tumbleweed style, cutesy, cottagey thing. It could be a big modern box. Doesn't matter. But as long as it's a tiny house on a trailer, yeah. no yurts, no caravans, no right. The other option is you want to build on the property. If you want to build on the property, that's fine. But it's building only. It's not live in my vintage caravan while we build. And the reason why we don't want to allow that is you might say. I'm just going to live temporarily. It's not that we don't want to allow it. The landowner doesn't. Well, I don't. I don't really want to allow it either because someone might say, "Well, you know, I want to. I'll live in my vintage caravan There's while a, I build the house." If they could take all the time. Two years work. later, they could still be yeah. building their tiny house. So, if you want to build, build sites are going to be available for somewhere between eighty-five to a hundred dollars a month, which is very reasonable. Yeah, understand. Mary, I've got a motorized scooter as well. Um, we've talked about that, haven't we? Um, with the pro whether you want a post office box or whether you want to get your mail delivered to the property, yeah. and then could I just spend like twelve seconds to finish what I was saying? Oh, did I cut you off? Yeah. Okay. So if you're building on the property, eighty-five to hundred dollars a month, but that's only daytime access where you can come and work on your own personal build, but no overnight stuff. So you go away. You finish your building, the sun goes down, you go away, and you come back another day. So there's no overnight stays. If you're, you're so you're either living on the on the land, hundred and fifty a week. Or you're, you're a completed to tiny house, during the day. you come, work on your build, then you go home, where else, wherever else <laughs> you live. That's it. So that's what people need to understand. There's no sort of middle ground because we need to keep, we want to have um, as little dramas as possible. So internet, we are talking about internet. Because we um, need internet. We need internet. We've got, we've got an online presence. A thing to, to maintain. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. we're definitely looking at internet, even if we... Even if we're paying to get this set up, but we're definitely going to be get, trying to get yeah, we need unlimited to have, if possible. Well, we need to have brought. We're, we're trying to get broadband on the on the property, so um, there'll be three G, four G around the property depending on where you are. But uh, we we've explained to them. We've already had a couple of emails with um, people who said, "Well, is there going to be access to the internet because we both work from home and run a business?" So. There's, there's going to be more and more of that, and that's going to be not only almost a necessity for us, but it's going to be a draw card for people that want to come and live because it's 2017. There's a few draw cards, a couple of things we haven't mentioned. Kangaroos. I do want to mention it, but um, should we or not? What? I don't know. What, what else is going to be happening? So there's, there's a number of things that are going to be happening on the property. We are going to be managing the tiny house community. That's it. There is going to be horse adjustment on the property. Yeah, Helen, I'll, by, I'll, I want to be working from home as well. Managed so. by others. There's going to be camping, a uh, section of the property devoted to camping and glamping opportunities, and there's houses on the property that will be re renovated and rented out Airbnb. 
there'll be another couple on the property live in live in managers that look after that side of things. We're going to be just looking after the tiny house side of things. But in that tiny house side of things, um, there's going to be a section for the residents. We're not going to have all this mixed in, but we are looking at setting up a tiny house display village where we're approaching uh, tiny house builders and tiny house building companies. You know, the ethical ones, the professional ones, not the dodgy brothers. Um, to have their, their designs on display. So if they want to have a display... It's to there. encourage the public to come in and have a look and sit and ha have a coffee at the cafe and... Yeah. Um, so one yeah. of the builders might actually do a display house that actually operates as a cafe as well. Maybe. Um, as I said last week, there's... That's a good idea, actually. There's a, there's a... If anyone wants to check it out, the Story, S-T-O-R-E-Y, the Story Coffee Company... And I think it's in LA or somewhere in the States. And it's a mobile cafe. I don't think they haul it all over the place. It's pretty much stationary, but it's a mo it's a cafe that operates from a tiny house. They've got bars and you know, you can sit yeah. at the tables and stuff. Yeah. So um so yes, if you are a tiny well, house. We builder, might have mentioned this. I it's hard to sort yeah. of I'll have to go back and watch them and see what we have and what we haven't mentioned, but it's gonna have souvenirs as well. Oh, our frisbees. <laughs> Always bring up the fris oh. frisbees. Um, there's other things as well, like the possible a possible chapel, a possible so, tiny house chapel. Yeah, so we might have it. Not we're not religious. We don't believe in God. I believe we all crawled out of the sea on legs. People, but people don't need. We don't need to talk about religion. Anyway, the point is, we <laughs> might, as part of our workshop, some people we, do believe. As part of our, and I respect them greatly. Um, as part of our workshops, we might build a chapel, which could be used as a scenic photography place. For weddings. For weddings. Or, or anything or, else, for that matter. Um, even, not like a god thing, but just a nice, cutesy little building that if someone wants to come along with a marriage celebrant and stand on the porch and do Or if you, if you do want to have a tiny little wedding. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it's not going to be adorned with religious artefacts. Um, It'll just be a little... There's cute. a lot of things that we've discussed. Um, and... The landowner is very open, very excited yeah. about the ideas. Um, because during our... But this is all going to happen over time. It's not going to be bang, yeah. come September. This is all going to be happening. We're going to allow the um, tenants to move in. Yeah. Because there's all these ideas Settle we've got. In. We're going to pick two or three ideas and run with them. And then we're going to start with probably the tiny house workshops yeah. and seminars. So the things we're going to start off with is people living on the property, people building on the property. And, and then probably the display homes. And, and, and we'll the, get a couple of workshops cafe and, Yeah. Because you know, the ultimate picture is having... A Lamborghini. <laughs> sorry, sorry, that just came out. Um, is to... <laughs> what you were saying, darling? Honey, I don't know. You threw me. I, I don't know. No, the ground the, clearance, ultimate... the ground clearance would be shit house for a lab beginning. I'd be uh, scraping the no, no, it's not. That's not the ultimate goal. <laughs> Maybe not yours. Right. No, so no, I don't what is the ultimate goal wanna... for tiny house building? You would you said you would never buy one. You'd be happy to borrow one. I'd happily play with one, but I would not pay <laughs> five hundred thousand dollars for one, no. <laughs> Darren crawled out of Middle Earth. I don't know where he crawled out of today. Um, but yeah, it's an option to, we probably won't run anyway, all Anyway, the about... ultimate thing is to have, not excursions, but have the community come in and get involved. We want it to be the a... The public come in and get involved. We want it to be a creative, physical place, which is the, the hub for all things tiny houses. Yeah, yeah. So, so we want to have a garden, uh, and it, it's a, it's a horse farm. It's a horse stuff. Yeah. Did I just let a cat out of the bag? Anyway, um, so there is no specific garden areas, fields, right? And lots and lots well, of fences. And the video. Um, but we want to have, we're going to be contacting some of these places that do garden co gardening courses and permaculture design yeah. courses. Um, and so we're going to do workshops around. Yeah, I guess there's two reasons why we're a bit about announcing everything is because number one, um, it's not all going to happen all at the same time, and is is it all going to happen eventually? Yeah, we don't know. And, um, and number realistic. two, um, we haven't got to the finer details of it all, and I don't even know if, 
if the owner has given us the okay. Or Alex. Is, did <laughs> you say Alex? Oh, we're okay. just calling him Alex. Oh, fine. <laughs> Alex is the, is the... Alex is the owner. Yes, all right. <laughs> you twat. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so there's lots of ideas that we've got. Uh, they will come to fruition over time. Yeah. Um, some... So there's a bigger picture. It's not just the tiny house. And, well, again, there will be privacy. You will have yeah. privacy. Um, One of the things we are... And I know but it's going to be also... Yeah. Um, like a farmer's yeah. market as well. But, yeah, we're looking at having a farm. Because if we're growing all these vegetables um, in this garden, then it might be a very producive, producive productive garden. And so maybe we, we generate more food than what we can actually eat. So why not sell it at a farmer's market? And then I it's, thought, well, bugger, why don't we have a farmer's market it's in a the front it's field? Gonna, and, I'll, and I've been given the okay to run, we can run art classes as well. Mum, mum. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to come and do your art class. So, yeah, <laughs> there's a 500 square f metre? 500 square metre um, auditorium, you know, where they used to bring the horses in and auction the horses off. So there's an indoor area with the kitchen and toilets and stuff where we can use. Um, but we also want to get the <laughs> workshops up and running. So the things we want to focus on this year is obviously, well, our goal is, is Alex sort of said if we could get two or three people, you know, us and two or three others living on the property by the end of the year. That'd be I great. reckon more will come in. I'd like to have 10. What we've seen initially already is that there's more people that realistically are, are looking to build on the property rather than, oh, I've got a tiny house, I just want to bring it along. So... If Thanks, I Vicky. I don't know if you saw her latest one. She's just um, put up another one on her page. The copper one. That was yeah. amazing. I saw that. Well done, Mum. Um, I feel so... She's having an art exhibition at the end of the year. I think it's in October. I don't know, how to, I don't know how to do that with art. Like if I, if You'll it, have to do one of Mum's art. No, no. If, if I, if oh, I, that would be funny. No, but if oh, I... Oh, that would be... Help. Mum, you have to have a... No, but your mother's so tall. Art and Darren can come along and... No, but it's, it's like Entertain it's everyone. not just your mother. Your mother is your mother is enormously talented. I love her dearly, but um, anyone who's amazingly gifted, it's like that's a nice one. Well done, Christine. It's like I'm quite like Hi, I, Sonia. How do I say that? Like, well done. It's like really, Mum, Sonia, not oh. my Sonia. No, she's my sister. <laughs> hey, Sonia. Hi, Sonia. So anyway, yeah, so there's going to be, uh, so we want to get people living on the land, if possible, and building on the land, and we want to get workshops up and running. There's, I was something just we're not letting the cat out of the bag, but we're getting, we're going to get, we're talking to a well-known person. There's a lot of cats, we've got a lot of cats in the bags. <sighs> we need a cattery. Um, so there's a well-known person in the States that we want to get out for a tiny house building we're workshop. I know that, but we also want to get domestic workshops yeah, up and running. That. Shut up. So we want to get. I want to get at least one going this year, and then one in January, the, January or February. The famous guy. We'll get him out um, early next year. Uh, so basically, it's going to be an, a learning hub. So education, learning. Um, but what I was also going to say is, during the course of these workshops, during the if we do like a four or five six day work, live in workshop, we, you come along and camp on the land, bring your own tent and stuff, and we'll camp out on the land and do these workshops. There's going to be structures that are created from these workshops, and some of those will be sold. Uh, some of them might be auctioned off. Some of them might be sold. Some of them might be um, kept on the property and then rented out Airbnb style. So we might do, um, as part of one of the workshops, we might do some cool off-grid sort of cabin. It's about utilising the land um, yeah. for, for what it purchased for. And, really. and this guy that we're looking at getting out in January, he's probably never seen a kangaroo. He can't. blow his socks off. I'm, I'm sure he's seen a kangaroo. What, you mean the last time he came out? Mm -hmm. I don't know if he did. Did they have kangaroos in Sydney? Anyway, the point is, I'm not saying any more than that, but um, yeah. So, what else is going on? <laughs> that kitty out. No. He, he, you can't tell him a secret. Thanks, Helen. We'll see can't. you next time. Thank you for your support. Thanks, Helen. See ya. See you next time. Okay, so meetups, what, um, in Geelong yeah. and in... We're doing the next Brisbane. one in Geelong. Brisbane. So we're going to do a trade-off, you guys. I'm willing to do a 125-kilometre trip. It's 250-kilometre round trip. What are you talking about now? 
if oh, to, to go to Geelong, but the, the next one, September, is bloody here. You guys here. can come here to Kindle. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and then, we, and then we'll get back to Melbourne and we'll do Melbourne ones again. So, I think I spoke to you guys last week about how I'm a bit nervous about spring because we know that we're going to be moving back into the caravan and it's sort of going to be semi off grid. But uh -huh. we have to do it up, so I'm going to be doing it up over winter. Now I wish, if I hadn't known this opportunity was going to happen, I would have done it over the summer and uh, the spring, summer, autumn. But now we're in winter, so I'm going to be, we're going to be doing it through the winter, doing it up and getting it ready. But you want it, you're, you're thinking about gutting the whole thing. Eventually. Um, no, we'll just, so you don't reckon? No, we'll just clean it. No, we haven't got the money. We'll just clean it up to, um, to make it look good. Money. More. Not all that. I oh, am. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> I am. I'm broke. I'm in debt. I'm going to get out of the hole. Anyway, <laughs> we should start a crowdfunding campaign. <laughs> Help days. Help days get out the hole. Um, <laughs> we have actually talked about a crowdfunding campaign for the business. Um, the thing I don't like about crowdfunding campaigns is the major and the reason why we don't allow them on the Facebook page, we'll allow ours, but we won't allow anyone else's. The only reason why we don't allow crowdfunding campaigns on, on the page and in the group is because they often come across as just people begging. It's some glorified high tech version. It's usually of like, oh, help us build our own tiny house. Yeah, help us. We want to live the off grid lifestyle. Or we want to help be us grow our own business. Well, well, no, it's, we... it's not, not even the business side of things. It's more help us. We want to live debt free, and we want there to. There was a one that we didn't allow because that was purely based on a well, lie for a start. Well, no, the, the, crowdfunding, anyway. the crowdfunding campaigns was like glorified begging to help us live out, you know, live our dream and live a debt free life. Well, that's just well, yeah, we want that as well. Why should we help you? This is begging. The one, the other type is when people are trying to crowdfund to raise money for a business. And if they're flogging that business in our group, no, we're not going to allow, allow that. But that's because we don't like allow any sort of self-promotion of someone's business. But, it, but if we're doing a crowdfunding no, campaign for our business, gonna, that's different. It, it, I mean, yeah, we get to pick and choose whose crowdfunding we want to promote. Yeah. But the ones that we've seen, the ones that have come along have been... Thank you, John. John uh, loves our work. Yeah. Oh, thank you, John. Um, yeah, the whole... Uh, I want to, I mean, many of us, all of us would love help with our own project or our own uh, personal build. Yeah. But, and that's the thing, if we let one do it, yeah. then everyone's going to want yeah. one. So. Thank you, Christine. Christine was hoping to make it to Kyneton. Um, awesome. She can't make it to Geelong. She's going to get back to work. So, enjoy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so. Excellent. Thanks, Christine. Yeah. So July 2nd, New Farm. New Farm Park. And apparently he's booked for 20, so... Yeah. Good on. Looks like a nice place, too. His... I want to go to that one, but I can't. The Brisbane <laughs> meetups better, better not be more popular than ours. I hope they are. No, because then Carter will get a big hit. <laughs> he's already got a big hit. Oh, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> much more of a turn out than you fellas do. Oh, that's because it's just a new thing. We've yeah, been it is just begging. Even the, some of the businesses that have... Come along, yeah. We're and I don't like ones that play play on what do you call it the emotional strings. The only one that I the, the one crowdfunding campaign that I did see that worked um, was a, a lady. The one that got her is burnt down. I think it was a lesbian couple in, in the states, and that she was building a tiny house, and they were like ninety five percent done. The tiny house was in a barn. She had all the white goods lined up in the barn. The builder had his. The, she was paying to build the thing, had all these tools in the barn, and the barn went up. Um, yeah, that'd be awful. So you can imagine people would want to help yeah. her Yeah, and lost every, she lost yeah. everything. The builder lost $5,000 of tools, yeah. and she was after forty or $50,000 to rebuild to where she was at, oh, you know, plus to repay the builder, and, and that went off, and, and she certainly got the money. And that's fine, but unless there's some sort of tragedy involved, mm. it's generally comes across as being... Yeah. And the reason why I've been hesitant about launching a crowdfunding campaign to, to help boost we don't want to come tiny across houses as begging in Australia. We don't want to come across as begging, but we also begging, but we also don't want to uh, cop all the bullshit. That oh, we oh, you just after the money now. All that <laughs> sort of shit. So 
Um, but what I was going to say is a crowd. I would like to do a crowdfunding campaign purely for the um, the land, like to get these initiatives up and running. Well, I was it would like be, the cafe, it would like be more, the chapel, like it would um, be more the garden. The, yeah. um, I'm thinking along the lines of there's no guarantee how long, you know, we don't know how long we're going to be on this land for. Mm. So it'll be more a crowdfunding campaign for the Tiny Houses Australia business to get workshops up and running because we want to run well, workshops. Not necessarily. Like, we want to run workshops nationwide. We want to run seminars nationwide. We want to be able to offer building yeah. services to people, yeah. um, either full turnkey, yes, we can build your tiny house for you, yeah. or no, we can provide a builder who will work with you at 50 bucks an hour or whatever, you know. Yeah. That sort of thing. So, um, but not even just that. Like I'm just thinking to help kick off the community, um, get it up and running, and get yeah. some excitement around it. And, yeah, because some know. people are happy to do it. I mean, um, when my son was accepted to the um, to represent Australia for the under twelve um, international baseball federation world championships in Japan. Um, he, you know, we, that was, that was going to take some money in. And I was that was through the school, wasn't it? And I was, no, it wasn't, it was through, oh, the baseball, through the um, Baseball Association of Australia. And I didn't have the money, it was going to be several thousand dollars, and, um, and I, he was accepted into the team. I thought, oh, yay, oh, fuck, how am I going to pay for it? <laughs> and we did a crowdfunding campaign, and the, the school got on board, the primary school he was at got on board with a, uh, a gold coin donation come in casual clothes day and stuff and and some people uh, I did put it out to the tiny house community because at the time he he was a keen wannabe tiny house built now he didn't give a shit about tiny houses but all he thinks about is baseball and PlayStation but um, hopefully he'll yeah so Leon come is happy it. to come out to the property and help out and yeah. the other things we you know we, we want to do working bees yeah working bees yeah um, but what I was getting on with that is I ran, I ran a crowdfunding campaign for Mitchell to help raise money to cover his, his, the cost of his trip to Japan. Yeah. And some people within the tiny house community um, put money in. I mean, yeah. I didn't know you then. But yeah. yeah. I mean, Andrew and Gabrielle Morrison, they donated money. Yeah. Well, quite a few people. And, and that's the and thing. Moira, that, that's, Moira donated that's, money. That's I haven't the, forgotten. That's the type of causes. Yeah. It's not about us or it's not about – it's it's – more about the community developing the community yeah. and growing so, and if we don't grow then the com yeah. what we're doing I mean the fact is we need to get we grow. need to get the business to a point where you and I can work on it full time yeah and I don't have to go away five days a week doing 14 hour shifts leaving at 4 30 in the morning coming where back are you, at eight where are you night. Kate it's a big drive for her <laughs> I'm presuming she's up in Queensland or something yeah. So, yeah, that's my big thing for this the next six to 12 months. I want to be able to get in a position where I don't have to go and do work stuff, my job. Um, like this morning, I left at 4.30 this morning. I got back at, what, 6 o'clock tonight. Yeah, well, no, and that was early. Usually normal, I, normal days is coming back at 10, 10.30, sometimes midnight. So. Yeah, and then have yeah. two hours sleep, three yeah. hours sleep, get up not and go a, again. Not, so. not a lot of business hours to make those calls that we get. Um, we get a lot of inquiries. Yeah, a so, lot of people asking for trailer quotes. So things are like exponentially. There's only so much else. I can do. I try, I try and help out where I can, but yeah, he's the businessman. He's he's more. No, you've you've got a good business head on. Your yeah, side. I mean, I've got I've got ideas, but in terms of implementing them, mm. you just need to learn to use last parts, not write all the. All right, I'll write last words down in my school. pretty floral notebook. I'm old school. I what like to write. No, I like oh. to write. Attention, my phone is, my battery is flat and the phone will shut down in 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. We'll just sit there. Oh, that's hot. We'll sit it between us. I think we're, I think Zoe's starting to go to sleep. The, uh, to begin with, the off-grid is for the $150. Yeah. So that's all the off-gridders would need to pay. If you're going to be coming on, when we do the second call out for people, that's going to be on-grid and yeah. there will be a cost for being on-grid. We're not sure. It might be $150 um, including bills. But no, it's going to be plus bills. It, it might be plus bills. We're not sure. Alex has mentioned 
It's going to be no, plus bills. Just keep it the same, but, um, um, well, no, because but there's only going to be there's only going to be people who are getting their own energy and they're making say hundred and fifty. There's only going to be certain um, there's only going to be certain parts of the field of the of the property where obviously we can't get it's not going to be enormously expensive to get for Alex to get electricity to seven hundred acres. So um, he's going to extend the electricity throughout some of the, the land, but obviously yeah. it's going to be a bit difficult to so access the, all of it. So, so the on-grid spots might be in one field. The people are saying, "Well, I want to have pigs and chickens and, and, and fence off a. I want a two-acre plot." Then okay, well that's way down the back, and, and that's going to probably field, cost more than one hundred and fifty. And field F yeah. or whatever it might be. And that would be a longer term as well. Yeah, um, yeah, because we're happy to encourage that because. Uh, the, the landowner is certainly holding this property for the long term. And so if we can get people that are willing to invest in the property themselves in terms of hmm. putting Maybe down roots, planting trees. And... during the baseball. Okay. Yeah, there's lots of money, Mary. But, um... See, Kate agrees. She also likes to use pen and paper. Yeah. It helps me remember things as well. Oh. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. We tried to log on to Skype the other night. Oh, where's my fucking password? And then we had to... Oh, I haven't written it down. That's why. Ah. My no, fault. writing. If I had a case right now, I would rest no, it. No, because it. you're wrong. Anyway. Yeah, because that's typing. You're talking about typing. That's a different thing to writing. It's very different. So what do you want to get out of this weekend at Living in Cloudburn? I, I'm, I've got a, to say... A, a nice relaxing weekend. <laughs> I have to say, I've stayed... Now, I'm not a world traveller. I haven't gallivanted around the world. world oh, I've traveler. heard of the bullet journals. I've, I've seen people use those. I want to check it out. It keeps things in check. And... So you're my bullet journal. Well, I keep you in check, do I? Yeah, <laughs> I try. The one thing I've got to mention is was living in cloud. No, no, I don't know what he's what it is, but I'm gonna bloody find out. I've, I'm not a world traveller. I haven't gallivanted all over the world, but I have stayed in hotels in various countries and in various beds in various locations around the world. Oh. <laughs> I know where he's going. The bed at this tiny house, Carl. If you ever see this, I don't know what the hell you did with that bed. It's the only time that I've actually want to specifically make note of, oh my God, that bed is the best bed I've ever sat my ass down in. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I've, I've paid three, four hundred dollars a three, four hundred dollars a night for a hotel. Bed. I don't know what it is, but I want to find out. We'll find out. So that's my job for tomorrow. I want to find out what it is. Yeah, no, I just want to relax and enjoy. I want to, hopefully it's a nice weekend. Yeah. So. Actually, is it snowing yet? I want to go check out snow if it is. No, you want to take my 1995 Mazda 121 up the snow? Well, yeah, I don't have to no. go all the way up, just some of the way up. Anyway, um, so we will do more of a reveal because we haven't really shown you too much of the, the house that is living in Cloud9. Um, basically, it's a 10 metre long tiny house, two lofts. A master loft with a queen size bed accessed by stairs. There is a second sort of living room lounge loft. We'll show, we'll show you guys tomorrow. Accessed via ladder. My goal but for the weekend is to get this one up the ladder into the loft. We're going to <laughs> safely down again. Just don't film me coming down. Uh, so we are going to be doing a YouTube um, footage for the tour, but we're also going to do this whole live live feed tomorrow night but yeah. we're not going to re reveal too much and apparently get this i'm doing the videoing unless that's the shit that we thought doing. maybe and since she's going to do the the video tour darren interviewed carl so it was carl and darren on the screen and i was filming yeah and darren joked about me doing it next time and i said all right i'm game maybe i'll do the tours he can do the interviews and i can do the tours but he has to learn how to do the filming and the editing that's no, me. Whoever anything. does the filming does the editing. No, you do the filming. Right? Do the <laughs> he doesn't want to do the editing. No, because you do all that shit with the music and... That's just what you do. Yeah. You like the music, don't lie. Ah. Yeah, there's other options. Um, yeah, lowering lofts. Um, there's a few options. 
in our display house that we're planning, at least I probably believe it will never happen, but I know what's going to happen. Uh, in our display house. I believe house, it's going to happen more than you do, darling. We've got about a 600 mil raised uh, false floor where our living room is, and there's a queen size bed and a dedicated big drawer that you open up, and that's your bed. So you don't have to worry about getting up and down stairs and ladders. So a slide out bed is one option. A Murphy bed, you know, the ones that come down from the wall, a Murphy bed downstairs is another option. A permanent downstairs bedroom is certainly another option, and that's something that Grant is doing from Designer Echo Tiny Homes in his latest 7.2 metre large home. Um, but also things like couches that convert to beds, but that's kind of a, a temporary thing. I'm talking about a bed that you go to, you know, your regular sleeping bed every night. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. But another option... You've been watching the um, episodes, or what did you call them? YouTube. Are these? Are these episodes? Yeah, they're episodes. No, not these. You said I do a great job. Must be talking about the editing. Oh, yeah. Um, but another option is you've got slide-out beds, you've got Murphy beds, um, platform beds where it might be not up in a loft, but it might be sort of three feet off the ground, and it gives you a huge amount of storage space underneath for drawers and roll-out and pull-out drawers for clothes and things. So you could have a platform bed, or indeed, like Anna White did. If no you worries, have... Lisa, thanks. See you, Lisa. Uh, we will. Or if you, have, if you haven't checked out Anna White's channel, do so. Anna White, A-N-A, -A, White, as in the colour white, on YouTube. Anna White did a bed that lowered down into the living area for sleeping, and then in the daytime you hit the button and it goes back up. Um, uh, so it's... So there's a few options. Just reading the comments, Kate. Uh, August? No, Geelong is in July. Kyneton is August. Yeah, yeah. and then September will be. Somewhere. We might still be here. Yeah, we no, don't know where they're no, going. No, September, September will probably be back in Melbourne somewhere. We'll wait till we get settled first before we do anything at the property. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Geelong, uh, I have. Yeah, you can't keep saying, are you really doing a lift cart? Because that would be cool if you did. We're at the home show and I saw, I saw a lift. It wasn't obviously for tiny houses, but it was a, a, a single person lift. There was some company that had a display at one of the home shows recently. And it was this little lift. It was like some rocket pod. You, and you stand in this little pod and you hit the button like, and it goes upstairs. But um, it's only designed to carry cool. one person at a time. See you then, Christine. Yeah, she's going to come for the August ah, one. See you, Christine. Mm. So, yeah, a lift is an option. Um, we've, we've got 12 people watching. I like, yeah, it's dropped from about 30, I know. That's all right. Serious. But that's all right. I mean, people, it's Friday night. People have got stuff on and family stuff and they're going out having a life. I'm like, oh, oh, cool, Leone. That'd be great. She's going to come to both. Excellent. We're not sure where we're going to do it in Kyneton. Oh, it might be just at a pub store. <laughs> you have enough pulleys, you could pull yourself up. <laughs> uh, there's that thing on YouTube where there's a guy who's got a, a treehouse, and the way he gets up to the treehouse oh, is he gets on the bike. You would have seen that on that um, goes up. cabin porn promotion. That book? Maybe. Yeah. So, a treehouse is an option. Um, Apparently there's Not a... at 2am. The thing is, yeah, I want to be able to take my coffee up to bed, so I'm going to... That's why I don't want a ladder. I, part, there's a couple of reasons I don't want a ladder. That's my arthritis, and yeah, I want my hands to carry things, because I like to have my coffee, or my wine, or, or my, your laptop, whatever or, it is, or, your, or my laptop. Yeah, that's and, it. Um, yeah. And there's there's no reason why... And again, blatant blood, I love his what work. What are those serving... Um, they're called trays, don't they? No, not the tray. The ones that you pull up to the loft or to the next... Oh, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, that'd be cool. Have one of those. Yeah. So, um, no, but I was going to say, I do love his work. Grant from Designer Echo Tiny Homes. If you check out his Facebook page, he's got some photos of his recently completed large house, which has got a V-shaped set of stairs going to two lofts. A um, dumb waiter. That's it. <laughs> Three people, bang, 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 dumb waiter, that's it. Oh, I've met some of them. <laughs> you, you. I was, I was at, I swear, I was in Melbourne. I was, at, <laughs> I was with, I was with my friend at university, Sam, and we were at La Pocetta in Williamstown, 
I remember because I broke up with my girlfriend. He was consoling me. He was saying, no, you don't need him. You don't need him. You find someone better. You find someone better. <laughs> and we were at La Planqueta. And we, he said, we'll order a bottle of wine. And so I said, oh, I'll have a bottle of the red, whatever. And the waiter, I swear, the waiter said, would you like glasses with that? And I looked at Sam and I said, I don't know, what do you reckon, Sam? Should we just suck it out of the bottle? And, you know, <laughs> why would the waiter say, would you like glasses? Well, of with course. It's not beer. It's yeah, like a right. bottle of Merlot or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, why not? Let's have glasses. Or do you want to suck it out of the bottle? You are empty. I was. Oh, cheers. So, you put the wine? Oh, it's in the kitchen. Because I didn't want people to see that we've got cast wine. I don't mind if people know that we drink out of their cast. Oh, come on. Some goo. <laughs> no, come on. Can we at least try and be classy? Aww. So, yeah, is, if any of you guys... Um, you can try. It doesn't mean we are. 12-volt car winch and some pulleys on this slow. See, I like the... I want to check out the, the idea of pulleys because I like the idea of pulleys and winding things because that could be totally off-grid. Like this thing that Lisa posted... Um, Tiny Heirloom, which does amazing imaginative work in the, in the oh, States. Oh, those stairs. Had a set of stairs, like going down, let's see if I can do this with my fingers, going down this way, and then built into the stairs was another staircase going the other way that, that pulls that out. It. Well, and it was, but it was automated. But it was all motorised oh, and stuff. I, I like their motorised. Yeah, I, I know, like but motorised things, tell me if I'm wrong, those in the know. Of course but, it costs money. But, it I mean, costs money, but the, the, there's a motor in there, so it would take up space and it would cost <laughs> Cost money and it, would, class. and it would um, and it would be heavy. But the idea of just having a manual thing, still light things and just pull it out on a, on a set of runners or. or I'm I'm something. I'm looking at the phone on his knee, guys. Just reading the comments, it's easier. Well, just put some carpet on the bottom and just pull the freaking last three or four steps out and use that as a. So there's some very clever ideas. Um, you know, I, I originally, oh, actually, I'll show you. Originally, I was going to have a. Um, you show them that I'm going to get another wine. A what do you call them? A laundry sh laundry chute. Well, you were originally going to get a guy called Brett who drives a black Lexus. But... No. <laughs> You're always you. making up future boyfriends for me. Um, Robbie, the trade. Yeah. So those who don't know, I this is what got Darren and I in trouble. This is what how we ended up connecting. I made this. Where are we? I made this tiny house miniature model, scaled down model, and I'll just take the roof off. So my original design, you can see the hole there, that was my laundry chute. So I could just throw my clothes down. <laughs> you would break your bloody leg. But I... But where to, would they have landed? They would have landed on the floor the, downstairs. Just in the floor and the. It just room. meant that I didn't have to carry them down the stairs. That I can walk down, then go scoop them up and put them in the laundry. Which I don't. I'm not sure. So that's the model drinks. that caused all the trouble. I just people. said that. Did you call you one? Yeah. I did. Yeah, I just said that. Yeah. Um. So the reason why I was going to bring this out and show you guys is not to show off my work, but to get you guys inspired to do your own. Um. I haven't seen many people do them. What's it made of? Uh, so, I was just going to say, if you did want to make it, there's different materials, but I use balsa wood. And I got them, you can get them from Spotlight. Balsa wood, uh, Spotlight sells balsa wood as well as bunnies. As well as if you're in a city somewhere, um, riot art. Mm -hmm. um, or any other craft store for that matter. But there's other materials you can use. You can use polystyrene or styrofoam in, in the States. Yeah. Um, Dan Peckett. And I think you put a basket there. Mum does that. I don't think Mum's around anymore, but they, they're in a two story house and she just gets everyone to throw their clothes down. In fact, I don't think the basket is there. I've, I have seen it there. Occasionally the basket will be there where they can just toss it in there. Yeah. Yeah. But Dan Paquette from Tiny House Customs, he's the one that started, that inspired Lisa. Yeah, I saw his and I thought, what a great idea. So I did one. So I had to do some calculations on scaling. Yeah. I had the plans drawn on paper. Then I did the sketch up. So then um, from that, I converted them. Into There's a few changes. That door is no longer there. Yeah, it's not. The door, that's all. Squared off. Squared off now. I'll just take the second level off. So, I don't like the 70s wallpaper, but anyway. So instead of having the desk stop short, it's coming it's backwards. So it's coming all along there. All the way along, yeah. Yeah. 
and the bathroom. The bathroom's there. Nadia, Dr. Nadia wants to know sweet. if um, if you're. I say Dr. Nadia, Nadia, and this actually means I know who Nadia is. Tell Dr. I remember things. Dr. Nadia wants to know if um, your wardrobe is upstairs. So I think that's on the yeah. overhead, isn't it? Yes. Um, this doesn't have an overhang, oh. but my SketchUp design does. So I'll just give you a visual. I'll turn it around that way. So pretend, ignore pretend that, that half. Goes, yeah, ignore yeah. that half. So I do have an overhang. Not that much. Not that much. Yeah. And but that's going to be where the drawbar I is. I think. Is it not? Yeah, it will be over the drawbar. Yeah, so it depends on how much ball weight it's going to have. But yeah, let me just look. Get the other. Um. Yeah. So where the oh, it's hard to handle the. It's like I'm looking in a so backwards you. mirror. So this, imagine that's the overhang and the wardrobe's going to be probably there. I don't know if it's going to be an open wardrobe, like open shelving. I might even put a desk in there. I You've don't know. You've got a lot of things. Um, You've got a lot of shoes. And the windows, I just use plastic from, um, what do you Is call it? Is it takeaway containers? Or no, no, you know, like when you buy something and it's all wrapped in plastic, the plastic... Yeah, plastic wrap, plastic wrapping. Not like, you, no, not like that. No, but the plastic packaging. packaging. Oh yeah, so we're we're, we're in packaging. tune. Packaging. So I just save a lot of the packaging. Um, Dick would be so proud. What else? The door. So the door slides. So oh, yeah, that, you've tweaked that design as well. Yeah, that's not. So that bit of plastic there, I, I just cut up a um, display folder. Kay wants to know if you're going to have a balcony on the other end. Probably not. The rooftop balcony there. Hang on. Hold on. so long oh we're back yeah, there's we're only back. eight people still there yeah, um so, well that's my balcony there there is going to be a railing and there was one yeah. there it's come off you need so. a railing you need a railing um but basically Pretty so good. plastic from packaging or display folder or just a roof fluted cardboard yeah fluted cardboard any craft stop a uh, craft stop craft shop i got it a packet, a, a whole packet full of it from Spotlight. You can grow your herbs on the balcony. Yeah. Um, they even had little mini tiles, which I grabbed. Oh. <laughs> Darren doesn't like the colours. Just paint it's all right. Oh, and a makeshift wallpaper. That was just some craft paper from Spotlight. Like a 70s concept. Some, I can take the kitchen out. I am going to do another one simply because my, my uh, design's changed a fair bit. Maybe we'll have a come build your tiny house uh, I think model I've workshop. just broken it. No, it's still there. So you've broken it. It's just the glue's just coming apart. So a bit of foam, not foam, cork. Yeah, I'm just going to glue that back together. But that, it's not going to be an L-shaped kitchen anyway. But again, when you do build one of these, you work, you figure out what you like, what you don't like, what works, what doesn't work, and you you come up with new ideas as well. Like, Hang on, if I do this, that might work better. So and that's you know definitely what, worth playing around in with. Um, but if you don't want to ask around with with that, you can also just do it on SketchUp, wouldn't you? Yeah, but I like to do things for real. Not that SketchUp's not for Are real. Are you saying I'm all talk? No, I'm saying I can actually physically touch this and move it around and play with it. So, yeah. 
Um, and I did it in three sections, so you can take the roof off, the second level off. The other um, idea... And then my stairs. In terms of a floor plan, you guys, Michael Jansen, uh, I'm sure you know who Michael Jansen is from Tiny House Design. Check out what he's doing because he's, I'm not sure if it's something he sells or whether it's some part of his book or a cutout or a, or a download that he offers from his site. But he has these templates. So when you're working out your floor plan, you can actually download and cut out, you know, a bed, a kitchen, a table, a bench. And you can, so if you've got a 20 foot by or, or an 8 meter by 2.5 meter rectangular template, you have these little cutouts and you can move them around. So rather than go pen and paper, nah, that shit, I'll do it again. Thanks, Lindy. See you. You can move things around, you know. See you, Lindy. Um, thanks, Kate. I think it's pretty cool. I don't Car know. Cutouts is herbs. Yeah, it's <laughs> herbs. Apparently it's a herb. Um, someone said, oh, it's Heather. Nice. I don't know. I guess it's worth showing them. But that's if you're wanting um, to get a... a if it was just me, like originally, if um, before we knew where we were going to be living, I wasn't going to what try she, and get permission. What is she asking? You, showing a model to the to the uh, council? Realistically, I don't think I don't think I, that would help your chances. You could have the most stunning looking, most scale model, and on the planet, you could show the council, and they're just not open to it. So that's why most people are just doing it. Um, pick your right spot, as I've always said. Do it and just don't tell the council. And if the council finds out about you, then, well, okay, what am I doing wrong? What, what, what law am I breaking? You know? um, and also a Stanley knife cuts through balsa wood real good. And you can get some decent wood glue. Um, even wood a too. glue gun, a hot glue gun worked well. Um, so have a play around with it. It's, it's actually fun. I, I got really in, stuck into it and enjoyed it. And balsa wood. Balsa wood. I love you. Sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, hopefully you get some inspiration out of that. And yeah. Oh. Enough to do one for yourselves. Another review that's coming along is from this. We've had this for a while. We've just no, been a bit don't, slack don't about doing a review. Our friends at Scrubber Washbag. Scrubber Washbag. Yeah. Scrubber.com. Did I use Scrubber? Scrubber Washbag um, has sent me this. Well, it's a scrubber wash bag, isn't it? And we're going to test it out. We're going to test it out over the weekend. That's actually what I'm looking forward to. Over Mount the There's a little stream um, and river just outside of the tiny house, so we're going to film him see, the idea doing is, some washing. See, the idea is you put your washing in there. Obviously not a lot. It's not a massive thing. And then you you roll this up and you tie it together. You put your detergent in You fill it up with water. Put your clothes in. It can probably handle... Half a dozen you know, pairs of socks, underwear. You can do your smalls, maybe a couple of t-shirts, a couple of pairs of shorts. Um, you put your wash, wash water in there, put a bit of thing, you fill it up, you tie it up, and then you, you know, old style. It's got some built-in nipples and things uh, in there. And you scrub it, scrub it for three minutes, and it gets your clothes clean. Then you empty it out, you put some clean, you know, fresh water in, swish it around again, rinse it out, and then hang your clothes up. So... Um, I wanted to test this out. I've heard about this company for a while. The guys at um, Sam and the guys at Scrubber Washbag sent me a, a, a sample. So we're going to be testing that out. I My gut feeling is it would be great for travelling if you're doing road trips or if you're travelling in the country in a teardrop or a caravan. Especially. Um, if you're living off-grid. If you're in a tiny house permanently living off-grid, I imagine if you were a single person... You wouldn't be doing this. If no, if you were a single person, you probably could get away. But you wouldn't want to. No, you probably could. You wouldn't want to. I be, wouldn't want to. This could be, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the key thing. You probably wouldn't. I would because it's. But risky. definitely for camping. But it's got it's got its uses. Or travelling. Um, and not only that, but it's especially a, if you're hiking. But not only that, it's a waterproof bag, so you yeah. can just use it. Also, it doubles as a waterproof gear. Bag. <laughs> um, and not only that. Get this, right? This is amazing. You put your wet stuff in there and, it, and it's waterproof so it stops the rest of your luggage getting wet. Or, if you want to keep things dry, think about it, reverse psychology, you put your things in here that you want to keep dry and that way if you're out in the wet weather or if you're at the beach, it doesn't get... It keeps the wet things from wetting other things and it keeps the dry things from getting wet from other things. This is a multifunctional thing. 
I did. <laughs> so, so Scrubber was I think we're running out of things to talk about. <laughs> Scrubber also have another product they sent me as well, which I'm going to do another review on. It's What's a very, that? It's a very slim line um, wallet. I can't remember the name of the oh, wallet. Oh, that's right. Like a waterproof wallet. It's a waterproof, very thin, like obscenely thin wallet. Now, if you just need to take like your card and, and have some cash, I'm going to do a review on that as well. Mm -hmm. I have to find it. Hey, it's so thin, I don't know where I'll put it. Could you leave it in your wallet? Uh, I'll find it. Mm -hmm. So there we go. <laughs> um, so look forward so, to the review on that. And look forward to the review on the the Extreme Ultralight Tower. We're giving one of these away. These have silver in them, which uh, helps wick away the, the moisture. Um, very fast drying yeah, as well. Keep an eye out on that video, and that's when we'll probably announce how you can win it. So yeah, that's it. I think it's a wrap. What do you reckon? Mm. But anyway, um, I feel confident in knowing that she won't put out that bloopers video, so that's all right. That's going to be going up for sure. No. Just cut out the bits where I'm singing because I didn't... Just say goodbye to people, darling. We're sitting uh, there. Fair enough. We've gone on for a bit long tonight. We always go a bit longer than usual. I wanted to avoid a uh, size cardboard one, how that will go. Um, life size not avoided. Um, oh, are we stopping early tonight? I do I think we're just running out of half. We're just running. No, Thanks, there's Kate. seven people. The numbers are dropping, so it's time the, to go. Kate's <laughs> just taking the piss. That's <laughs> but tomorrow night for about half an hour, same time, eight o'clock, live yeah. from the tiny house. We'll give you a proper walkthrough of the tiny house, talk about all the things that we like and what we don't like. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a tiny house. It's got a six hundred wall. There's always going to be things that we like yeah. and don't like. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to doing the cooking in the kitchen and cleaning up and, and having a shower. And I'm looking forward to her cleaning up as well. And, and um, <laughs> we've got wood. Um, yeah. like we got, He's got the fire connected. There's hot and cold water. There's running water. Thank Christ for that. There's um, a compost toilet. The comp well, that was composting toilet. Yeah. That worked. Um, glass. The switch glass. Yeah. Unfortunately, Carl won't be there, so we won't be able to say, so how did you do this? How much did that cost? What did that cost? You know, but um, we know the basic details, mm. and we'll have a tape measure there so we can measure stuff to give you an idea of what size things are. Mm -hmm. But the kitchen's fabulous. Um, he's done an amazing job with the windows. Well, I don't want to call all over the place showing. I mean, I do want to show you guys tomorrow night, but we, we do want to keep some of it for the YouTube channel for the actual yeah, tour. Yeah, that's fine. 12 hours later more I hear that. I know what they're like. I'm yeah, just think of the children no singing. No, no. I don't know. I don't know if he can sing. I haven't heard him sing. Colleen is thanking us for entertaining you. That's all right. We do our best. Not that that's... <laughs> we're probably funny. Uh -huh. Well, I don't think we're... They're probably laughing at us, not with us. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, yeah. Have I done anything stupid in the last week? Probably. Anything, anything stupid of note? Probably. No, I don't think so. I'm not sure what you're talking about. No. Um, Why are you mentioning it then? That might be funny. Oh, you should have seen what he did this week. But I don't do stupid things, so that's good. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Good night, yeah. Mary. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we should, we should probably wrap up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good night, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Good night. And we'll have some more to say tomorrow night, hopefully. Yeah, this has been us. <laughs> this has been another video. Right, if you want to see more of us, make sure you subscribe. Tell all your friends and family Oh, if you guys know how to set up these interviews. Open broadcaster software, open source broadcast, OBS software, I think is what we need to get our head around. I've downloaded it. I'm just playing with it, but we'll get it organized. Yeah. I think I'll have to have a look at it because he can't get his head around it. No, you just think I'm thick. I'm not thick. Mm. All right. Night, right. Leonie. Cheers. Mary, Thank you, guys. Kat, Heather, Kate, Nadia, and Colleen. <laughs> cheers. Thanks for joining in. All right. Cheers. I love you. Kiss me. All right. I'll hit the big red button. Night, guys. <laughs>